welcome to Talking Red. Uh, it was scraping on the barrel again today. Couldn't get anyone else, so they brought me in again. So, so I thought you about... meant me then. No. Well, scraping wasn't gonna, the barrel. Wasn't what say. what no, an intro. So, yeah, well, Paul's going to lead us through <laughs> today's one because I'm a bit of an amateur when it comes to all this jazz. Um, so, yeah. Exciting times, got another friendly on the uh, on the horizon. Yeah. And it looks like um, Alison's going to make his debut. Yeah. Jeff, isn't he? What you do you think? What do I think? I think it's, You're just... the goalkeeping expert, aren't you? The resident goalkeeping expert. I've never laid People don't know that. Down. I used to play footy with Andy when we were a lot younger, before all this all started. So I've actually seen him play in goal. And? Amazing. <laughs> no, I think the big thing, and I think Neil said that the other week, what's... what's the overall thing, he, he looks like a goalie. Yeah. He looks like a goalie. He looks like someone who's got presence, big, strong with the back. Yeah. And I don't think we've had that for a little while. I mean, me, it's, it's a funny one because you look at people's size. Pepe Reina, for instance, is only, what, 6'2". Yeah. But he had that presence. Mm -hmm. Chris Kirkland was 6'5". Didn't really ever have mm -hmm. it. It's just that surety at the back. And, and he, look, it's only early days, but, I mean, and, and you can't go off a couple of clips, but that save he made from uh, Gruwich. Yeah. In the little clip, it wasn't so much that he saved it, it was the fact that he pop it over the bar. Yeah. It was just out of there. Whereas how many times over the last couple of seasons where we, we've seen things just spill off a keeper or we've had someone that hasn't got a hand on it and it's dribbled in or one thing and the other. Mm. You know, um, <clears throat> see, it's all looking good. I'm really, really curious to see him. I'm really, really curious to see how he affects our style of play as well because one of the, the big things apparently, and if you go through his stats and all that, he's very much like Edison in so much that he does like to play out from the back. Yeah. And... I think you could see, I mean, I, I always think back to the season um, where, we'll go back to Pepe Reina, there was a season when Pepe Reina actually had more assists than Javi Alonso. The amount of times he just pinged it over to the top, got a bit of backspin and, and Torres was on the back. Who do you think would benefit from that? Most in the, in the squad at the minute. Oh, I mean, Salah and Mane are going to be like frothing at the mouth about it, aren't they? Like they're going to be... I, I keep thinking about this, about it. We got, I think we got to a point last year where not only were we good at defending corners, we became more of a threat of scoring a goal off our own corners that yeah. we're defending than the, than the opposition team. And I think that just goes to the next level with, with him in goal. And the psychological aspect on the opposition, that can't be uh, underestimated yeah, either. Yeah, absolutely. Because <clears throat> whenever they, they'll literally be winning corners and thinking, we need to keep an eye on these lads going the other way if, we, if they yeah. win the ball. So, I, think, I mean, I... He's the, I think he's the most exciting of all the signings. I was chatting to an Evertonian last week and one of my cousins and he was saying to me, like he, he's, been, he's watched all the other signings come in and, and him and his mates and they were like, yeah, yeah, whatever. You can see like, where he fits in, you can see where he fits yeah, in. And, and yeah, and as much as we were getting excited about it, they were like, so what? If you start the season with Carrius or Ward in goal, we don't care. But he said as soon as we signed Alisson, that was when they were all like, that's interesting. Like, what does that do to them? So, I, I saw someone, John, you say about the presence. I saw someone saying on Twitter last week that he's the same height as Mignolet. Yeah. I, I haven't even checked that to see whether it's true. I just refuse to believe it because he looks about 10 foot bigger than Mignolet, doesn't he? Well, I mean, we, we've said this before. If you look, that people seem to shrink or grow in goal despite yeah. their two physical size. And it does go back to that, that presence thing. One thing I'm curious to see next season is whether we adopt um, what Guardiola does at City. So you talk about playing the balls over the top, but quite, mm. more of, quite often they'll, they'll split the whole team, totally vacate the midfield and go really wide. Yeah. So almost invite the other teams on. So, and it's a, like a good bowler. Mm. They'll do a few short ones and just when they suck it in, they'll go over the top. No, it's yeah. really, really, really exciting times. And I can't wait. The, the one thing I'm waiting for, it's a great save that I'm looking for. It's the first cross that comes into the box, just a and bang, clatter someone, take the yeah. ball, bowl it out. And off you go, and straight away, Pressure, the pressure's off him straight away then. Yeah. Well, definitely. I mean, we talk about the goalkeeper. It's going to be interesting to see what happens um, <clears throat> with the other two now and whether any, which one, whether Carrius travels or, you know, it's Mingley, but I don't think Mingley's back yet, is he? I don't or whether, he's back it, yet, or whether he sticks with Kelleher or. The stories this morning are literally were struggling to get 12 million quid for him, which I think is mad. Like I was chatting about him yesterday and I think I was on, on the gutter show and. Like he's a good goalie. <laughs> I know. I know that. Like most Liverpool fans think he's absolutely crap now, but Mignolet is a good goalie. So is Carrius is a good goalie. And okay, they've both had ridiculous problems with us, but considering we've just sold Danny Ward for twelve million, do you think he'd get twelve for Mignolet? Yeah, it goes back to the whole thing, isn't it? Goalkeeping for like a, a, a top four side is almost a completely different position to, to yeah, anywhere else. Definitely. Just the, the pressure and you know the focus you're on. I mean, you look at most of the keepers in the league; they might make. For micro mistakes in the game, but you don't see it. Because, but when you play for Man United, Manchester City, Liverpool, whoever, I mean, I'd say Arsenal, but no one cares about them anymore. Yeah. You know, every every single 
mistake you make is micro and hyper analysed mm. and talk over again and again and again. Yeah. I don't think Harris is a bad keeper, but I don't think, I, I said it at the time, I think it'd be very, very difficult for him to get over the Champions League final in a Liverpool shirt. Yeah. I hope he goes away and has a great career because I think, I, think I think he's got loads of ability. But yeah, agreed. Anyway, moving on. Um, Firmino's back in. Yes. He's a, yeah, the manager's been talking about him. said, it's good to have him here. He looks in good shape and if possible, we'll see him play against Napoli. And also, we've had uh, some quotes from Firmino as well. I think it was in the Echo yesterday. Mm. Uh, really, really positive one. It's amazing all the players just uh, normally we, they keep a, keep a low key pre season, don't they? Yeah. But everyone's talking about what we can do this season and how confident they all are. I mean, do you think that's a mindset change or do you think it's just a natural side effect of the, the evolution of the team? I think the, I think the, the Champions League final is a, is a massive thing. And, and it's, what's been really good to see is that the, the players and the, the noises from the players and the manager are exactly the same as the noises from the fans after that final. And we all said the same thing, was, which was no one was that sad because it didn't feel like the end. Yeah. It, it felt like this is just the beginning of everything. And the more I've seen of the players, like, there couldn't be a starker contrast between the noises and like the mood coming out of Anfield and Melwood and the noises coming out of Man United. Yeah. Like it, the, the whole feel about the place, I wouldn't swap to be a United fan now for like all the money in China. It must it just looks miserable. Whereas everybody involved with Liverpool already looks like they're having loads of fun before the season's even started. And Firmino adds to all of that, doesn't he, with his personality and all the rest of it. So him just coming back into training, I'm sure, is a big lift for everyone. Um Oh, yeah, is it like the stuff he was saying? And I know, like, it's easy for players to say stuff like that. But <clears> it's he sounded like he was being genuine about but saying not, what it's stupid. like to play at Anfield. And they're not stupid either. Though. They know if they go way over the top with something, the, the naturally guards. Everyone knows how footballers are, are yeah. guard that because that could come back and bite them. I mean, someone coming back to training, and we, we, it was further down the agenda. But Adam Lallana has also come out and been very, very positive mm. about the start of the season. We've seen his quotes, his quotes there. Uh, of course, we're going to be in the pack who want to take down Man City. On the liner as well, I feel a little bit sorry for him because he, he's kind of been forgotten about or almost written yeah. off. Mm. Some of the comments around him when people forget the season, but I mean, he missed last season was an absolute lights off for him. Yeah. But the season before that, up until April, he was in contention for Player of the Year. Yeah. I think people forget just how important he is and how much Klopp admires him. Yeah, I, we, I was chatting about this on a, on a review a few weeks ago about there's a thing in footy fans where we do this generally where we all go off last season. So we all expect players to do just what they did last season in a good and bad way. So everyone's written off Lallana, even the likes of Gini Wijnaldum. Everyone expects Mo Salah to be as great as he was, but that's literally just not how football works. There's ups and downs. Look at Ben Woodburn's just gone on loan to Sheffield United. If I'd have said two seasons ago, when he comes in and he scores the goal and all the rest of it, well, in two seasons, he won't. not only will he have not broken into our team, we'll be sending him on loan to Sheffield United to get him some game time. I don't think people would believe me. At the same point, Trent was in the background and potential it's, well it's never a straight line is it football it's, it's exactly that so it's the same with all of this I, like I'm a I'm a massive massive Adam Lallana fan and fully fit and with a run in the team he's got loads to add to it but it's the same the same point with him as it is with Danny Sturridge and I know we're, like, we're all getting back into the carried away with Daniel Sturridge can he come hey, back I never got out of it like, the, never well, got out of it the number of people who've said to me like but if we can keep him fit and it's the same look we might get a season out of storage all along, or even even Henderson's in this bracket of they just don't get an injury. But the reality is we know from the past that the chances are they will. So if you get 30 to 40 games out of Adam Lallana in a season and he can play at the level he was at two seasons ago, he's a fantastic player in this system especially. So I mean, if you look at it, if you, if you, especially where you look where Sturridge has been playing this season a little bit deeper, mm. if you kind of pull Sturridge and Lallana and manage their games, You've probably got much better chance of getting more out of them as well. Yeah, well, you can already. I mean, there's already stuff about this. They're in Evian now, obviously, aren't they? Doing the intense training with Klopp, which Klopp says it's like it's his week now. But there's already talk of well, Sturridge has got his own training regime because there's no way he can do three sessions a day. And I think from the noises that Sturridge is making as well, and I wonder if it'll be similar for Lalana. Like he accepts that now. I think in the past he might not have done, but he's a bit older. He understands his own body. So if players like him say, "Yeah, I get it. Like I can't play." twice in four days or twice in a week sometimes even if, and he might be going into the season thinking if I get 30 games I'm happy with that and I want to contribute and I want to score goals and that's the best way to get the most out of him Yeah I mean I think with Sturridge as well in, in, in hindsight I don't, I don't think he goes to West Brom on loan if there's not a World Cup that he's desperate to get into as yeah. well 
and then does himself in. Yeah. You mentioned Henderson there. Um, I, he's coming back in. Uh, and there's also comments about Trent mm. coming back in early, and the manager saying he couldn't stop him. Extra keen to get in at the Klein. Could be interesting at right back this season. Yeah. I remember saying two seasons ago the Klein had, like, had to really up his game in, in the attacking third if he wanted to stop Trent overtaking him in that position. And I mean, then the Trent played in the Champions League final. So, and he's good. And, and didn't he, look out of place. Really, I wasn't out of place. This is exactly it. It wasn't out of place at all. And had great games against City. And, and don't get me wrong, obviously, still had some, some dodgy moments away at United and was exposed a little bit against Roma. But. I think, we, I think he goes into the season as first choice and then we see what happens. Obviously, there's gonna, there's, there might come a point, we don't know, but there might come a point where all this football catches up with him because he's only young. Um, and Nathaniel, again, Nathaniel Klein's in the same bracket as Lalana for me. People seem to have sort of forgotten how good he is. He was an England regular in international. Yeah, England yeah. right-back. So, look, here, as, as your two right-backs in the squad going into a season, you well, couldn't, suddenly you've you, got you options, couldn't be yeah. stronger in that position. Suddenly got you? options. Yeah. And then just back on Henderson, comes back in, club captain. Yeah. I mean, he's come off a really good World Cup and almost come back with his reputation enhanced, mm. which is maybe a little bit one in the eye for some commentators. I mean, how yeah. with all the options we've suddenly got in midfield, talking about options, two seems I see everyone's writing these fancy teams down, and I've even got Henderson in. Yeah. See, I'd, I'd start. I'd, I don't see. I don't see a situation where he doesn't play the most most of the games this season. It's one of. I think it's one of the most intriguing things because it's exactly that. I think everybody because obviously there's this big thing about Henderson, and I think most people have done that all for being all just play for being all just play. I think everyone completely underestimates how much Klopp loves Henderson and Southgate loves Henderson. And Isn't it funny all these top managers are really, really racist? I know, and yet, like, Joe Bloggs on the street doesn't like him and thinks he's crap because he can't pass, which is it's incredible. Some of the performances in the World Cup, it is mad, actually. It's the first time in my lifetime that a Liverpool player has gone to play for England and come back with everyone thinking he's better. Like, the rest of the country thinking he's better as well than, he, than when he started. Yeah. Like, during that <clears> World Cup. But it was because... It, and it, this... This very rarely happens as well. The commentators were banging on about it, how yeah. well he played when he made a good pass. It was like, look at that pass, which, which most people ignore. So, look, I, I think if there's a Champions League final in a month, if that could happen, I know it can't before you all start getting me back. I think Jordan Henderson plays in the number six for Liverpool. I think he's first choice number six. And now, don't get me wrong, that might be a midfield with Fabinho in as well. But I think as it stands right now, it might be different in six months, it might be different in 12 months, depending on how Fabinho does and how he settles. But Henderson is key to the way Jurgen Klopp plays. Isn't isn't there a situation where Fabinho might actually free up Jordan Henderson a little bit more to play with a, with, with maybe as much freedom as he did for England this, Pot this yeah, summer? Potentially, I, I've, I've had sympathy for Henderson because under Rodgers, when he was playing in one of the more advanced midfield roles, that I think that gets the best out of him because he's got all yeah. that energy and the pressing and all the rest of it. And he can score goals as well. When people criticise him for not scoring goals from the number six position, it's insane. But it... That all comes down to what does Klopp want? Does Klopp want to have him go back into a more advanced midfield role or does he want to keep him as a six? He might end up being a bit more like Emre Chan was, where he's going between those two positions depending on the game. So it's a, I think it's a dead interesting one that to watch. Um, just to finish off then, uh, Danny Ng's been linked with a 24 million pound, sorry, I didn't mean to laugh then, 24 million pound <laughs> move to um, Crystal Palace. And it seriously didn't mean to laugh because the transfer market's gone mad. I mean, Everyone wishes Danny well. He's yeah. come to Liverpool. It's not quite worked out. He's had two horrific injuries. He's, and to be fair, he's never really looked out of place, but never really looked like he fitted in. And the club's moved on. The club now is a completely different, competitively completely different to when he first arrived. Yeah. And that, and he's been here for thir thirteen appearances, three goals, three years, and he looks like he. he he's going to get a move out of it and good luck to him. Yeah, it's mad to see that on paper, isn't it? Thirteen appearances. I'd have guessed it was more than that. So. Yeah, look, this point applies to loads of players, including the youngsters, that we've gone into the stratosphere from where we were a few years ago. And he, this is the thing, I've, no, I've never known anyone play so little for Liverpool probably and be, be respected and liked as much oh, yeah, as Danny yeah, exactly. Everyone likes him and for, for like legitimate reasons. Like, and I think he's a good player. And if, I don't know, I, I know why you laugh at 24 million. I think it's, I keep saying about my, uh, Michael Edwards, he's, he could end up in a position where he's bought Mo Salah for 34 million and then sold Danny Ings and Divock Origi for 24 and 27 million, which is just incredible business. I know that's pre and post Neymar money, by the way. Um, but the reality is, if you're, I can't believe everybody, it's sort of from 10th down in the league or 8th down even, isn't after him because he could score you 10 to 15 goals in the Premier League. And 10 and to 15 that, goals in the Premier League could, could be the difference between. Cru absolutely crucial. Yeah. It's like Glenn, Glenn Murray basically 
keeps them in the league last year. And without those goals, you're struggling. So there's loads of teams who, with a player like Danny Ings, will get in a run, he'll score goals. No, so and obviously, as you say, go with the best wishes of everyone. Absolutely, yeah, 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 definitely. So that's it. That's it for today's talk on Reds. Um, yeah, it's, it's getting ever and ever closer, isn't it? Yeah, can't anyway, believe how close it is. We're gonna win. What do you reckon? We're gonna win every game three nil at least. Every game three nil at least. Every game three nil at least, and win and win. Obviously, win the league. And I mean, Arsenal that's... six. Uh, just for just for Sam, we can't say what we said off air before because it's libelous, but. Um, um, I think I think Arsenal do all right, you know. Do you yeah, I think they'll be the surprise package. I'm, top I'm, half. I, I'd, I'd love them to like just knock United off the top four. Well, we'll see. Anyway, that's been to talk, today's talking heads. Don't know who's back tomorrow. You probably see me again in about six months. See you later.